In this video, I'm going to show how to route the Xperia Ion using the exact same method that was uh, created for the Xperia S. So again, this works even if you have a locked bootloader. Here's the original thread with all the instructions as well as all the links. And previously this wasn't able to be done because the, an ICS firmware wasn't out yet. So ICS was just recently released internationally and you can flash any firmware onto any phone. So I'm going to flash this Chinese firmware onto my Rogers Canadian Xperia Ion. So there's the firmware. Uh, here's the original guide for the Sony Xperia S. Here's the video for the Xperia S. And here are the instructions for the Ion specifically. So it is a bit simpler, there's less steps, and I'm just going to walk through that. So to start off, I'm just going to show that my bootloader is indeed locked. Uh, go into the dialer and type in star pound star pound service. Go into service info, and then configuration. And as you can see there, it says bootloader unlocked, allowed no, because this is a carrier branded uh, phone. So to do this, just like in the Xperia S, you have to be on uh, Gingerbread, so 2.3.7 and whatever build. As always, you should always back up all your data and you should either write down your APN settings or use a backup program. If you don't want to write it down, you can use the APN database and select your country and operator and it should give you your settings. So there's Canada and Rogers, the Rogers LTE and Rogers 3G. So once you've done all that, the first step is to download both the files that are required. So you need to download the rootkit and then download an ICS firmware. You don't have to install the Android SDK if you have both PC Companion and Update Service installed. So install those and those will take care of all the drivers. Uh, you can also get it from my Mediafire mirror here. So to start off the first thing you need to do is go into settings, go into applications, and make sure unknown sources is checked go into development and make sure USB debugging is checked. So once you've done all that, you can plug the cable into your computer. So once you've downloaded all the files, unzip the rooting toolkit and go into the folder. As always, I recommend opening up your own command prompt instead of running the batch files and make sure you're running as administrator as always. Copy the path, and then paste. So there are all the files. We're just going to run step one. Just going to get rid of that space. It doesn't matter. You can use uh, the tab key. That's uh, step one. So there's step one. And then once that's done, it's really quick. You're going to flash the phone. So now you got to turn it off. Unplug it. So the next step is to install Ice Cream Sandwich and don't wipe anything. So don't wipe data, don't wipe cache, and don't wipe apps. Let's go into the Flash tool and choose the Ice Cream Sandwich firmware. Uncheck those boxes. Okay. So now you're going to hold the down button volume down and plug in the phone to get into flash mode. Light should turn green and it should start flashing. Once it's done flashing, go back to the guide and you can unplug the phone and start it up. Now the phone's going to update itself and just give it a few minutes. So once the upgrade is finished, you're going to go into settings, which you can access directly now in Ice Cream Sandwich. Uh, 
go under security turn on unknown sources go down to developer options and turn on USB debugging so once you've done that connect the phone and then run step two once you run step one it might it might put you in the wrong folder just go cd dot dot to get back into the right folder so step two so once it's rebooted it'll install super user So if everything goes well, after about a minute and a half, you should see finished at the bottom. So now if I go into the phone, you should see super user. And there it is. So now there's one more step. Because this firmware is from uh, China, and hopefully there will be other firmwares that will be, be released, you have to get back LTE you need to flash the radio. So what you're going to do is power off the phone. Unplug it. And you're going to go back into the flash tool. As it states in the guide, if it does didn't root properly, just run it again. So now to get back LTE, you need to flash the baseband, which is the radio, since this firmware that we're using is a Chinese firmware and doesn't have LTE support. But uh, hopefully in a few weeks, as more ice cream sandwich firmwares come out, you'll be able to flash and skip this step. But for now, you're going to have to flash the gingerbread radio. So go back in, go into flash mode. I'm going to choose my Rogers firmware and uncheck everything except for baseband as it says here, excluding everything except baseband. So the only thing I have unchecked is baseband. Once again, hold the volume down button and plug in the phone. Green light goes on. And this should be really, really quick. Okay, so there it is, it's done. Only took a few seconds. Unplug the phone and boot it up. So once it boots up, if you give it a few seconds, and there it is. So first I've got 3.5 G or H, and then it should go to LTE. I'm just going to run a speed test, and check my settings to make sure I do have the right APN settings. Rogers LTE and then I'm just going to go and run a speed test So for some reason I'm still on uh, HSPA 3.5G, but uh, if you flash this correctly it should go back to LTE. Once you flash the baseband, you'll see that you get uh, the radio back in 4G or 3.5G or HSPA depending on your data plan and your carrier. Uh, just to show that I do have LTE speeds. Originally when I flashed the baseband, uh, I was stuck on 3.5G, so if that happens to you and you are in an LTE area, 
go into the uh, info menu, star pound star pound, I-N-F-O pound star pound star, and go into phone information, and if you scroll down, this is where you can choose uh, if, you, if you want to be on 2G or 3G. So first off, try switching it over to LTE only, and then switch it back to LTE preferred uh, plus GSM. And that should switch you back to LTE instead of 3.5G if you're in an LTE area. But again, just to note that it'll just show up as 4G instead of LTE uh, like previously. Just a quick glimpse of uh, some of the stuff in ICS. So it is version 4.04, .04, LT28H because it's a Chinese firmware. And the build is 6.1.E.0.233. Storage. Just to show how much space there is. And then total space. Obviously I've installed apps and taken photos and stuff. And I'm just going to demonstrate root by downloading an app application that needs root. So I'm just going to download I'm going to download uh, BusyBox. Um, as you can see, because it's on the Chinese, it was a Chinese firmware, so you have all these uh, Chinese characters. Make sure you switch back to English. Install BusyBox. If you don't know how to uh, change your keyboard, whenever you go into keyboard settings, you've got a button at the bottom here, English, there we go. Uh, I'll go into BusyBox, and I should pop up a super user dialog box. So there it is, super user, and grant. So BusyBox has been granted super user, and the route was successful. And BusyBox was successful. So that shows that root is working. If you want to remove the Chinese keyboard so you don't accidentally switch to it, because there are long press options on this keyboard, such as handwriting and the phone pad, you can't disable it directly uh, through languages and settings because it is a, a system application. But because the phone is rooted, uh, you can remove the files directly. Once you remove the files and reinstall them, like I have, you can disable it directly. So, for example, the Chinese, uh, the Japanese keyboard can't be disabled because I haven't gone through that process yet. So, download a free application such as Super Manager. Go to the fourth screen, which is the File Manager. Uh, make sure you turn on Root Mode. So, Root. Uh, grant super user permissions now when you go into the file manager navigate up to system and it'll ask you if you want to do read only or read write so turn it to read write to be able to move files and then go into app and then search for Japanese IME, which is the Japanese keyboard, and then Xperia Chinese, which is the, uh, the Chinese keyboard. So there's PO Box Touch, which is Japanese IME.APK. I'm going to select that. Okay. Scroll down. Down near the bottom is the Xperia Chinese keyboard. So there it is. And once you've selected both of those, just go cut. And just dump them off somewhere else, like in the SD card. So here's the SD card. And I'm going to throw them into the downloads folder. And hit paste. 
because you're rooted you can move those system files now if you go back into messaging and open up the keyboard now that the file has been uninstalled if you move it back and I'm just going to cut and then put it back in the app folder And then paste. Now if you go into settings, language and input, you should see the Chinese keyboard. You can select or deselect it. If you go down to the Japanese keyboard, and install it, Now if you go into settings, language and input, you should be able to enable or disable the keyboards as needed. And that's how you either delete permanently or enable uh, the ability to turn them on and off. So once again, this is the guide. Make sure you read all the instructions. Make sure you download all the files. So again, to do this, you need the root toolkit, you need the firmware, and you should also have uh, the 6.0F firmware. So either your carrier's firmware or the AT&T firmware. So Roger 6.0F or AT&T. If you don't have your APN settings, go to the APN database. And make sure you have all the drivers and software installed, update service, PC companion, etc. So once again, it's pretty straightforward. Be on gingerbread. Run step one. Install ice cream sandwich without wiping anything. Turn it on, unknown sources and debugging. And then run step two. And lastly, flash the radio. Once again, thanks for watching.